Happy New Year everyone, my name is Cami, and in today's video we're going to be doing a plan with me for the month of January. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody had a safe and wonderful New Year's. I just stayed at home with my family and luckily the fireworks didn't wake up my son. So we were able to watch a couple of movies and just have a cozy night in. Again, I want to thank everybody for all of the support in my last video. It did really, really well, and I think it had a lot to do with the fact that everybody liked and commented, so please continue to like and comment on my videos, and let me know what you guys would like to see from me moving forward. I try to read all of them and reply to them as fast as possible, so be sure to check back if you've left me a comment because I'm pretty sure I replied to it. For today's plan with me, I'm going to do it a little bit quick paced. It's not going to be heavily edited this time just because I'm trying to get this video out on the 1st of January and I promise next time moving forward it won't be this rushed. But anyways, let's get right into the video. I've already started using my pen loop here for my Twisby Eco Rose Gold. I purchased this from the Goulet Pen Company a few months back and I really love it. The gold tip is probably one of the best nibs that I've written with in such a long time. The ink that I'm using in here is the Ralph Waldo Emerson ink. It's actually kind of leaking everywhere so I really have to clean this out. I want to start off by showing you guys my spreads that I set up for my 2021 bullet journal setup video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it in the top right corner. Oh, and by the way, I don't have my nails done because I'm in mommy mode, which is why I don't have my ring on either, but I hope you guys don't mind. Anyways, if you have seen my 2021 bullet journal setup video, these spreads will look similar. I wanted to show you guys how I've been using it. So this is my resolutions page and I'm just kind of writing my resolutions or things that I want to accomplish this year down just free form. I'm not numbering them or anything. That's why I had such a huge space here. I haven't put any photos in my photo of the year page yet. This is my focus page, which is a new thing that I'm doing and I don't really think anyone's kind of done this before, but basically every month I'm going to write a focus for that month. For January, I wrote a solid start because I'm going to focus a lot on getting my YouTube up and running, getting my Instagram situated and probably doing some spring cleaning, but in winter time. <laughs> I've started filling in some dates, mostly birthdays, for my future log, nothing in here yet. Again, I'm still kind of planning things. And for my 2021 goals page, I've written down a couple of goals. Hopefully this entire spread will be filled from corner to corner with just all the goals and things I want to achieve this year. My ideal day, week, and month spread is kind of coming together. I've jotted down my son's sleeping schedule and his bath times as well as when I should be posting a video or an Instagram photo. And then I have marked out here a plan with me, sorry, a journal with me at the beginning of every month, a plan with me before the month ends, so this month of January doesn't count. And actually I'm gonna be doing a couple of plan with me's at the end of the month since I'm doing a bullet journal and a planner. My master task list is barely touched. I only came up with a few things here just so that I can get my list going and jog my memory on what I wanted to accomplish. And I haven't filled anything out for my tracker yet because today is just the 1st of January. Nothing in books. And for my growth tracker, I only wrote down my YouTube items that I am tracking. So my YouTube subscribers, my watch time hours, and my channel views. I'll probably do these at the end of each month. I haven't really tracked my finances yet, but I think what I want to do is 
write a section here for my subscriptions. So I'm gonna have to rework these columns a little bit. And finally, my YouTube, my business, and my Patreon planner, I haven't really touched. And I haven't filled in any quotes. And that brings us to the beginning of January. For the first spread, I'm going to be adding some reference photos to this page here on the left. I personally really only do single page cover pages. I previously in the past have done double pages, but they take way too long and I just don't have that much time anymore. But in the previous video, I talked about the illustrations that I was doing for the eucalyptus leaves and how I ran out of steam when it came to drawing each stem because I didn't have any reference photos. So I printed out a couple of them that I'm gonna paste to this side here, just so that I have something to look at while I'm drawing. So I'm going to take some binder clips, keep my pages down, and I'm just gonna collage them so that I can see each of the flowers properly. And I also have a little bit of a color palette going on here. I am not sticking to this completely. I do like the hint of blue for maybe this, the reflection of the sky when it hits the snow, so I like that. And I'm just gonna lay these images out. And while I'm laying it out, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I chose these images. So as you can tell, I'm doing a floral theme again. This is really the kind of look that I'm going for for this notebook is doing a lot of botanicals, floral illustrations, keeping with a garden theme. And for the month of January, one of the flowers of the month is the snowdrop. So I looked up some images of the snowdrop on Pinterest and I printed them out and I'm going to paste them in here. And I'm gonna toss you guys over to a quick time lapse. And here we go. Hey everyone, it's Cami editing in the studio, and I made a last minute decision to continue editing this a little bit longer, so that's why the video did not come out on the first, but originally I wanted to time lapse the entire thing, but there's just some parts where I don't feel like it makes interesting content to watch time lapsed. I think if I were doing paintings or something, then it would probably look a little bit better, but since the majority of these spreads are just done by marker, I think I decided to stick to real-time footage. This just means I'll be coming in from time to time to narrate what's going on in the spreads, and eventually I think I'll have a couple of pieces that are time-lapsed, but most of the time it'll be done in real time, and also I'm sorry there won't be any journal ASMR in this video because when I recorded it, I actually had my baby monitor going so you can hear the staticky noise of the monitor and also my husband was playing Call of Duty down the hall and you can hear him raging at times so next time I promise I'll have a more quiet environment and we can do some ASMR journaling sounds. Going back to the video, I'm finishing up this reference page and I've had this idea for a while now where I use the left side of the cover page spread to lay out the ideas that I have for each of the designs. And I like this because it's kind of like a little bit of a warm up before I jump in. When I do my spreads, I don't really plan everything out. I just kind of sketch out the layout and do a quick drawing of what I want. But most of the time, I just kind of wing it. So I guess you can think of this as a mood board. But I think for next month, I'll clean it up a little bit so it's not too clunky and it's a little bit cleaner to look at.
So I chose the snowdrop for January because not only is it the flower of the month, but it's also really easy to draw. Again, I'm coming back from a hiatus of doing anything art or illustration or journal related, so I'm a little rusty, and you can tell by my shaky hand I can't seem to get a pretty steady line, but I know that with more drawing and more practice, I'll get a little bit better. If you're following along with me and you're trying to draw a snowdrop as well, I'm really flattered that you like my theme enough and also I know you guys are starting late so I promise that most of my spreads are really simple. The snowdrop was really simple to draw, I just drew the stem which was drooping a little bit because it's being weighed down by the head of the flower and I made one closed which was really easy drawing ovals to make the head of the flower and one semi open where I made the little green pollen heads, I don't know what they're called, peeking out from the petals and the blades of grass were really easy to draw as well. I just made sure I had different positions, so some sticking straight up, some pointing down and the one thing I wish I added and maybe you guys can add to your spreads is little dew drops of snow or water. I thought about that way too late but maybe you guys can incorporate it into your spreads. For the title of the month, I did a loose cursive of the name January above a mini calendar. I don't know what it is about making tiny calendars, but it's really one of my favorite things and I like the look of it as well. I probably should have done this on the opposite side of the spread if I needed to reference it real quick, but maybe I can try that for next month. And in this section, I am coloring in the swatches of the markers that I'm going to be using. I don't really know why I did this. I guess I'm just really into the look of swatches in general. When I did my pen tests for my 2021 notebook lineup video, I had a ton of fun doing the pen swatches and it also looks really nice. So I'm going to incorporate that into some of my cover pages because I just really like the look of it and it's a nice way to practice seeing what the ink looks like on the page when it's dry. And I am now coloring in the illustration that I made and I'm using my Zebra Mod Liner in a brush tip. It's actually something I don't see a lot of people have. I see the Mod Liners in the bold with the chisel tip, but they also have brush tips which is really nice when you're doing hand lettering and also coloring in your drawings just like I'm doing right now. And I wanted to mention that I'm not doing watercolors for the spread because as I mentioned in my 2021 bullet journal setup video, I don't like the way the watercolor looks on the Archer and Olive paper. I have a feeling I'm just not using it properly, so I'm going to try practicing on other things off camera before I bring watercolor back. One of you guys in the comments in the last video suggested that I use gouache. Gouache? I don't know how you say it, but I'm going to pick up some cheap sets just so I can practice with that as well because I really do like painting for my cover pages, but I don't like the way that the pages react to it afterwards, and so that's why I'm only sticking to markers and pens for this particular spread. And I'm finishing off this spread by drawing some snowflakes. I also noticed that I went overboard again with the blue Tombow marker at the bottom of the page when I was doing the snow. It looks like water. I probably should have just done highlights or something, but it's really hard to keep your train of thought when you're recording and drawing at the same time. Either way, I'm happy with the way that it turned out.
My first spread after the cover page is my January monthly calendar. I personally use the monthly calendar a lot in my bullet journals, so it's really important that I have one and that it has enough space for me to write things in. So if you're using a five millimeter dot grid like the Archer and Olive notebook, I'm doing a six by six spacing for each of these squares and it gives me enough room to write what I need. Also, you just saw me flip the ruler. That's actually a little tip that I discovered when I'm drawing and I can't see the other side of the ruler. I really like straight lines, so if there's a little bump in the line, I get kind of annoyed and most of the time I do it again, but that's just a little tip. If you can't see it on the other side of the ruler, just flip it around and do it from the bottom. My calendar is also positioned in the top left because I don't really like writing with my hand in the bottom right hand side of the page, especially with a brand new notebook. I just can't seem to get a good position and my writing gets really sloppy. Also, I use whiteout tape to fix my mistakes. I found that it's the best to correct all kinds of mediums, especially if it's dried and you can tell even zoomed in, the black is hard to see through the whiteout tape. I'm decorating my calendar by writing January underneath the grid by using the same cursive that I used on the cover page and I sketched out some more snowdrops in a smaller form. I find that I have better control of my hand even though it's still kind of shaky when I'm drawing smaller but it doesn't really matter because I go over it in color anyway. I think it would be really noticeable if I was doing just black and white, which honestly, I want to try doing one of these years. So maybe in a year or two, I decide to do a black and white only journal. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you think black and white journals are cool or if you have to have color. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. It took me this second try to figure out how to do the snow properly. If I drew the lines of where the ground was and then just highlighted it with the blue, it looks a lot more like snow. The cover page looks like the snowdrops are growing out of water, but that's why I think a reference page or a warm up page really works for me so that I can get all those little mistakes out and figure out how I want everything to look. But again, I just decorate the rest with these little snowflakes and stars. And finally, I am filling in the calendar by drawing little circles on the top left of the boxes. And this is where I will be putting the dates. I really like doing it this way. I used to do squares before, but the round circles just look a little bit more handmade, but I don't know, I might jump back to squares at some point. And I'm quickly writing in the days of the week at the top row of the calendar. I prefer my days to start on Monday. It just makes more sense for me in my head, but I need to write them down because I do have other calendars that start on Sunday and I can't control those. On the right hand side of the calendar, I am creating a little bar here so I can write in what I decide I wanna use that column for. And in the bottom left hand side, 
in this empty space, I'm just writing in my goals for the month. I probably should have had a dedicated page for this because I really like fleshing out my objectives and my goals in my bullet journal because it's a free space for me to just jot down the things that I want to do, cross things out, rewrite them, but maybe I'll do that in next month's spread. But for now, this little spot will do and I just hand letter the word goals and I write this month's goals right above it. I really like having the contrast of small print and large print. In this clip, you see me writing out task log slash dump, but I'm actually not using it for that anymore. I crossed that out and wrote down finances or something, but I'm trying to keep track of my subscriptions and my auto pay stuff because I have a lot of things going out and while I can afford it, I want to be more mindful about it because sometimes things like I don't know, Audible credits or Kindle books I don't really read as often. I feel like I'm only keeping them because I don't want to cancel it or I tell myself I'm going to use it and I never do. So I'm using that column on the right side of my calendar to keep track of everything that I'm paying for in the month. And then hopefully every month that goes by, I'm being more conscious about why I'm purchasing a subscription to something again. So this tasks and brain dump spread is one of my staple designs. I make a long column on the left hand side and then I split the second column in half. This is something that I've been doing forever and it's really worked for me. The long column becomes my task list which is just a running task list that I have for the entire month and I take any tasks that I want to reschedule or migrate and I dump them in there or if I haven't scheduled it yet, that's where it goes. And the two sections can be used for anything. I'm personally using it for YouTube and Instagram, but previously I've used it for um, next month and this month. Oh, also I make a mistake here while spelling Instagram, but I wanted to show you guys how well the whiteout tape works because it's instantly dry and you can write on it again. But anyways, this is what I do on all of my monthly spreads. I like this triple column idea and it really works for me. And the entire right hand side of the spread on the second page is just a brain dump. There are no rules here. I just put whatever I want in here. I can journal, I can flesh out ideas, I can draw. Basically, it's just a free space that I can use throughout the month and I am lettering in the word brain and doing my tiny text of dump. And I use the same marker to create these borders or these lines to make a bit of a header. And I decided to write Instagram on the bottom because like I said, that section of the notebook is really hard for me to write on. So I take up that space using designs or decoration, things that I won't really be needing to write over for the month. So that's why most of my decoration will be at the bottom. I noticed at this point that I didn't draw anything for the spread, so I picked a spot and drew a tiny snowdrop. And I probably should have done this on the bottom of the task list because there's just more space there, but I wasn't really thinking and I was drawing on the fly, which usually I'm pretty good at, but I was recording and whenever I record, I try to do it as fast as possible because most of the time my son's asleep. So again, the this is a little bit rushed, which is why it's really important to sketch out your designs as much as possible because it just makes the actual setup a lot easier and you could just run on autopilot with nothing to worry about.
Oh, washi tape. I can't believe I waited this long to jump on the bandwagon, but it's a really nice tool for decorating these blank spaces and still tying everything together. I don't have a really large collection, but the ones that I do have I think are versatile enough to be used across a bunch of different kinds of color schemes. Maybe one day I will have my own designs of washi tape. So I sped this part up because it's really just me sketching, but I didn't want to make the same mistake as I did with the tiny snowdrops and I sketched in just the heads kind of peeking down from the top of the page like lanterns and I really liked this look. It was just what I needed to fill in more decoration on the page, but not too much where it would be too distracting and again I put it on the super far right hand side of the notebook because that is really really hard to get to for me and so I just take up that space with a drawing or something. I might be late to the party, but I discovered that I can add some shading to my drawings by going over the spot that I colored. I don't really use markers all that much and I barely use my mild liners to color with. So when I found that out, I realized that I could do that moving forward. So now that I have that in my toolbox, I'm probably gonna use that in future designs because I noticed you can't do that with the Tombow markers on the Archer and Olive paper, it kind of tears up the page from the pen test that I did, so it's safe to do that with the mod liners. And that's pretty much all I have for the monthly spreads. I'm now moving to my first weekly spread of January, which is only three days. So I decided to go all out and jump out of my comfort zone and make really, really huge illustrations. I'm not good drawing on a larger scale, so I wanted to push myself. And right off the bat, you can see I'm having trouble even keeping control of the lines, but it's a really simple illustration so I decided to hang the flower heads over the boxes a little bit because I wanted it to look like that the boxes were behind the flowers kind of peeking through the flowers that are peeking through the snow I don't know I thought it was a cute little effect and I made some of them opening up a lot more to display the little green pollen buds. I don't know what you call them. I have to figure out the anatomy of a flower so I don't sound like a complete dork, but it makes it look nice when you have the green peeking throughout the white petals. So that's why I decided to draw it that way. And I also wrote a quote at the bottom of the page, but I probably should have made it a lot smaller. I don't normally like writing really large unless it's a title or a header. So I went out of my comfort zone, but I didn't really like the look. So I'm gonna stick to my comfort zone next time when it comes to writing in quotes, which I do a lot in um, my weekly spreads. Every week I find a quote that helps me focus or keep me motivated and I write that in the spread somewhere so I'm going to stick to writing them kind of small because when they're that large it's just a little distracting. Thank you. 
I want to point out that on my ruler I have these washi tapes that mark the horizontal and vertical splits to each of the pages. I split my pages in half a lot so I like having that easily accessible on my ruler. And finally, the quote that I chose for the first week of January is a quote by C.S. Lewis, and it says, You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. And I chose this quote because I started this YouTube channel as something to do with my time because of the lockdown and quarantine, and it turned into something that I really wasn't expecting. I didn't expect that a lot of you guys would be so welcoming and so nice and a lot of people would like watching my videos and like my style or my voice or anything about it and honestly the journaling space is pretty much dominated by people who are younger than me who are single and have a lot more time but I realized that it doesn't matter if you're old or if you're young as long as you are putting yourself out there and you have something to say or something to share then other people will listen and I just want to thank everybody who has been really welcoming and kind enough to leave a warm comment or just like my video. And even if you don't say anything and you're just watching, I just want to say thank you for doing so because I have never in a million years expected that I would be doing so well. So this quote is very fitting for me right now and I just want to share that with everybody. While I'm finishing up my spread with some washi tape, I just want to thank everybody again for watching this video. I'm sorry it doesn't have any watercolors or other medias and I stuck to just markers, but I'm not really confident with working with paint and water on this notebook yet. So give me some time to practice off camera and come up with other strategies for these designs. And here is the final flip through of my January monthly spreads. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out even though I only used markers. I really enjoy trying something new and because I stuck to markers only, I learned how to use them a little bit more. So I don't mind doing it and hopefully in the next spreads I'll try out other setups like 
habit tracker or a mood tracker. I primarily only stick to these spreads, so maybe this year I'll find something that I really like doing. And I hope that you guys were able to plan along with me and that you guys are ready for a really awesome year. And I just want to thank everybody who has recently subscribed to my channel. I am really flattered that you guys liked my videos so much and I hope that I can continue making videos that you like to watch. And if you haven't already, consider checking me out on my other social media platforms. I'm primarily on Instagram right now, but I promise I'll be more active on the others. And for those of you who are new, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel so you can join the family for more art and journaling goodness. And with that being said, I just want to thank everybody and have a good one.